we'll start in a minute we'll wait for a couple more people to join hi Gaurav I see you are already there There's still some more people joining. Can anybody just tell me if I'm audible because I'm using these earpods for the first time for a live stream. You can just quickly tell me in the chat box if I'm audible. Hi, hi, hi. Hi everyone. Hi Chinmaya. Hi Bhagyashri. Long time. Okay, I can be a little loud. Thanks. <laughs> I wish I just check my settings. Yeah, I think I should be good to go. Uh, welcome you all for this another session of Wildlife Weekly with Nikhil. And today is World Environment Day. And it's, it's a great day to think upon uh, what have we done as a species of human uh, to Earth and its environment and is it really a situation where we can actually say happy world environment and things that are making environment uh, better or at least maintain at a stage uh, where it is and maybe continue on uh, because it's also important for our survival but currently what we see uh, is the effects are not that great and one of the effects uh, of the topic that we are going to discuss today is uh, because of changing environment and a major part of it uh, is because of uh, the actions we as humans are uh, doing in our daily life so uh, the topic uh, that we are going to discuss today is effects of cyclones and we all know uh, recently uh, on Indian coast both east and west we had two uh, big cyclones which had devastating effects on human life on the coastal areas uh, but it uh, will get us thinking that is it just the human life that is getting affected because of these cyclones and the answer is no there is a lot of marine life there's a lot of coastal uh, fauna that is uh, also dealing with these cyclones and uh, how are they affected with these cyclones and not just the cyclones but because of the human activities or human actions that i've been uh, talking about so to discuss all these things, uh, Gaurav Patil will be joining us today. So I'll invite him to the chat. join in a minute yeah hi 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 Gaurav uh, am I audible hi Gaurav yeah, yeah we can slightly I think your video is stuck okay okay maybe some internet issue Also cracking a little bit. Okay. I'll just. Hello? I think Gara is having a little bit of internet issues because, again, he is in a sort of remote area. So till he uh, sorts out his uh, internet issues, I'll quickly tell you uh, a little bit about Gaurav. Uh, he did his master, sorry, graduation from Mumbai, from Ruya College, and then he went to Karwar, a beautiful coastal city in northern Karnataka, where, the, where he pursued his master's in uh, marine biology, and uh, then he uh, started working on marine biology and went on to work uh, in Maharashtra, uh, in Andamans also, so he worked pretty much. Uh, when he was doing his masters, he worked on sea snakes. And from there, I guess he actually developed a liking for marine biology. And uh, then he worked uh, for a long time 
I guess almost for three years uh, in Mumbai on coastal trauma. So I would like Gaurav to tell you more about that. So we'll wait. Hi Gaurav. Hi. Yeah. So I guess now it's okay. Gaurav, are you audible? Yeah. Yeah. You're audible. Your your video is not clear. Okay. Yeah, but that's oh. that's okay. Uh, Yeah, you are you are audible. So I was just telling everybody uh, how you went through your graduation and have you uh, started liking or working on marine fauna. Yeah. And uh, uh, I was telling them about your journey. But if you could tell us what you did in Mumbai and what you are currently doing. So uh, after my post graduation, actually I joined a citizen driven initiative called as Marine Life of Mumbai. Girl, why why is this crack cracking? Oh, I guess here it's showing. You want to join again? Work. Yeah, I'll join again. Just I'll just log out and join again. You want to try joining again? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll join yeah, again in okay. some time. Yeah, okay. Just exit the call and I'll add you again. So guys, installer apparently takes a lot of bandwidth. I have sent him an invitation. Yeah, but the voice is cracking, and it's very important to get all the details what he's talking about. So that's why I asked him to join again. It's okay if the video is uh, not very clear. Let's wait and hope that his audio is at least clear to all of us. Okay, he's joining. Yeah, now it's okay. I guess. Hello, Doro. Yeah, now it's. Yeah, your audible voice is still cracking. Could you speak a bit more so that we know? It's... Hello. Hello. Think he is having. Some major issues. Let's see if we can join in again. I will try to add him again. Let's hope it's better. Gaurav joins. Uh, for those who have just uh, joined the live chat, I was just telling everybody about Gaurav. So again, I'll repeat a few things. Uh, he graduated uh, from Goya College in Mumbai and then went, and went to Karwar, a beautiful uh, coastal city in northern Karnataka, where he pursued his uh, post graduation in marine biology, where he worked on sea snakes especially. And then he uh, went on working in coasts of Maharashtra and also in Andamans, uh, where he worked under many uh, reputed researchers on marine fauna, of course. And then uh, recently he was uh, working. Okay, I have sent. Sorry, uh, he was uh, working in Mumbai on the coastal areas and the effects of human activities over there. So uh, we were going to discuss about that. I think there is some. Problem about him joining. Let me invite him again. Uh, so till then, I'll just uh, quickly uh, tell you about uh, Karwar a bit more. If anybody of you have been there, it's a beautiful coastal city, and you get to see a lot of things over there. And especially, uh, what is interesting to see there on the coast is there's a not I would say aquarium, but a nice museum where there's a lot of uh, marine fauna. Uh, Displayed over there, and there's a nice structure of a blue whale, if I'm not wrong, outside the museum, which you can see and get a actual uh, size uh, estimation of that uh, animal. 
थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू मरीन वर आईदर रिलेटेड टू स्कूबा डाइविंग और लाइक यू हैव टू गो ऑन अ रिसर्च वेसल इन टू डीप सी बट मरीन लाइफ ऑफ मुंबई आई फील अबाउट इट डिफरेंटली बिकॉज नॉट अ सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू कंसिडर अ स्कूल किड ही कांट गो ऑन अ रिसर्च वेसल और स्कूल किड स्कूल किड कांट डू स्कूबा डाइविंग अ रेग्युलर स्कूल किड सो या सो इंटरटाइडल जोन इज वेर आई फेल्ट लाइक इवन द स्कूल किड्स कैन कम इवन इट इट इज एक्सेबल टू एवरी वन एंड दैट्स वाय आई फेल्ट like to focusing on intertidal zone during last 3 years and uh, i have also actually worked with uh, some many senior researchers who are working on dolphins around the west coast and also in yeah. andaman islands so and currently i am working with wwf india's marine program office which is situated in goa so yeah that's it Hello. Yeah. So, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 So, so could you tell us what are your current building? Where are you currently placed, and what are you doing? So, I am right now in Mumbai, and I'll be moving out to Goa in couple of weeks. And so, until this, I'll be dealing with mainly the graphics and all. And once the pandemic goes or like reduces maybe we'll start working on field again hopefully so uh, our today's topic is different from cyclone on marine life so uh, please put some light on that we always talk about how there was is on our coast and moon life but uh, what actually is the effect of the cyclones on marine life because they are there in the water yeah so actually to be very honest there is no such study which has been done in on our coast like where the cyclone like what cyclone will do to the marine life we have studies which are done in andaman islands after tsunami so how it affected the coral reefs and then the recovery of coral reefs like many senior researchers did that study but in case of the cyclones which we are facing on the west coast we it has started recently basically so i guess after if i am not wrong after 2018 or 2019 we have started receiving frequent cyclones starting from kyar and maha and uh, right now we then face nisarga then it's tokte and it goes on and on but unfortunately last two cyclones we were in pandemic like yeah. during nisarga and tokte yeah we saw the after effects on land but in sea we haven't seen anything much but in case of uh, kyar and maha maybe luckily or unluckily i don't know what to say but i was on the field station right on the beach with my colleagues and we were stuck at that place for 15 20 days approximately so we received Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. No, I think there was some issue with my Wi-Fi. That's why. Okay. Okay. Very connected. Now it should be audible. Yeah. So during Kyar and Maha, I was situated in Malwan with my colleagues and. Okay.
we saw like the first hand effects of cyclone what it can do not to right. human lives not only to human lives but also to marine animals exactly exactly so after we started receiving cyclones mainly uh, forest department the mangrove cell of maharashtra they have uh, like they are frequently acting like they are telling to like if they if marine animal trend should call 1926 to inform forest department so right. during this cyclone periods we like even department and even marine biologist like they really hamper these things on people that you should notify some officials about whatever right. happening around your right. area right. so this is the case about actually the megafauna which is mainly turtles dolphins and whales we have received right. many cases in last month actually okay. related okay. to many dead turtles live turtles or oh. dead dolphins okay. live dolphins but so even when i was in uh, malvern during kyar actually we did not receive any stranding but what happened That's is right. like the entire rocky shore it got covered with sand and oh, okay yeah it got converted into a sandy shore within a uh-huh. night or so and luckily wow. yeah luckily the next day we were able to okay right intertidal fauna is they are very specific in case of habitat so if uh, there is a sandy shore species you won't find it on rocky shore or if it's a rocky right. shore species right. you won't find it right so we literally saw those species which are mobile like snails mainly cowrie snails they were right. coming out of sand and like wow. moving towards the deeper waters so this is something oh. which we ha- like nobody have ever imagined like this so that in that way they are sensitive and we have no, we had no idea before this that these animals oh. like, can do something like uh, not exactly uh, maybe we can say a local migration all oh. right because the habitat is changed completely but they have Hello Thank God I was stuck again Hello Yeah there we go we lost you for a minute Yeah now now you are audible and the internet today is really low but i am also facing bit of wifi and data issues today sorry guys sorry sorry for this hello can you hear me yeah yeah now now you are audible yeah so the effect of megafauna is can they can be can be seen but effect of micro fauna right. it's completely unknown and that was just right. one example which we saw in malvern that they are coming right. out of sand and going towards the other rocky areas right. but this is the this is the case in like this is the case of mobile animals but when it comes to corals or zooanthids for that matter they yeah. can't move themselves so they exactly. simply buried and malvern is a like not exactly a reef but a fringing reef we can say and okay some part of it got buried during the cyclone and you can't actually do anything about it right right so so it's just we are still observing all these things and right. we are in our mind we are just trying to make sense of it somehow maybe right. 
yeah we, we won't be able to pinpoint it so easily and so quickly maybe it will take many years for us to yeah. if the work goes on it will take many years yeah. for us to pinpoint the exact thing which is happening right looks like right 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 so uh, in continuation to this topic you also worked on the coastal region or so to say the intertidal zones so what could you tell us more about uh, the effect uh, on these uh, fauna of cyclones not just cyclones but human activities so how what goes on in these regions so uh, the best way is most of the turtles which get stranded during cyclones recently we have started observing it are either injured like their flipper is missing okay. or something like that okay. and which might happen due to goose net so if you okay. ask me a ghost okay. net is yeah, it is ghost net yeah so it is a discarded net so after so okay. many times the net gets entangled in say boats fan propeller or okay. okay because of some activity it get damaged and rather than like uh, getting it back on the shore most of the time people discard it in the ocean so oh, even if you discard okay. the net in the ocean it is still as net so right exactly yeah it is still going to fish like the fish are fish or other animals are going to get caught yeah. in it no matter yeah, what yeah. so that is ghost fishing actually because nobody is intentionally okay. Okay. the activity is still going on but it's still yeah. going on right so most of the cases these ghost nets get tangled with many animals like turtles and yeah. even smaller dolphins and oh. so the in ratnagiri we have such incidences where the turtles get entangled in these ghost nets and they get stranded because it affects their buoyancy and right. the net is right. sometimes right. quite huge oh. and because of that they get stranded and then we have to do something so right now the right. good part is the fishermen and the locals are involved in all these activities and they are they are aware of these problems so whenever they encounter right. such thing around them they just simply cut the net call the forest department release the turtle and take a video of it okay so most of the time they get some remuneration if it's their net they get remuneration if it's not their net they get some okay. award they get facilitated by okay. some organization right. Right. yeah so it's kind of even they are uh, getting that feeling that we are doing a certain good work by saving right. these animals and in our culture right. in maharashtra these are considered as like gods the turtles are considered or yeah. whales are considered as gods yeah. so it is kind of in marathi we say punya karma so it is something like that so by doing yeah. it so the ghost net is actually so not because of even a healthy turtle if entangled in ghost net can get like shored during yeah. cycle because the buoyancy is not that okay. good and so are they are they really carrying those nets to the coast when they get entangled or you just find them floating on the surface of the ocean Yeah, yeah, they carry the entire. Net. Wow. Hello. Hello. No, I think we just lost him again. Hello. Yeah, I think I'll have to add him again. Give me a minute, guys. Yeah, should join in a minute. Because I can see many people still joining in, and what we have been discussing uh, till now with Gaurav is the effects of cyclone on majorly the mega fauna. uh because we can see the effects we can see uh, dead turtles coming or washing to the shore we can see injured dolphins uh 
the second issue that we were discussing was of the nets uh, which are uh, damaged nets which are actually discarded uh, by fishermen into the ocean uh, but there are still nets and animals still marine animals still get entangled in it and then of course they get injured because of those nets sometimes or many times they carry those nets with them to the shore and which then uh, also uh, damages their body and uh, these things uh, are affecting our marine fauna which uh, unless and until they come to the shore it's difficult to see and the other things uh, these are moving things these are animals which can move but there are things like corals or zooplankton which actually cannot move uh, on themselves and uh, these cyclones and nets are affecting them also uh, very badly So, hi, hi, Gaurav. I guess you're back. Hi, hi. Yeah. Yeah. I was just doing training. Uh, so. Oh, okay, okay. It's, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I was just doing a recap for everybody. Yeah. 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 Y
like it prevents us from these all those like rough seas and all this area so right. on sandy right. shore there are sand dunes so right yeah. now there are very less sand dunes to be honest if you want to see, if you really want to see one you should go to the east coast in odisha where they have very yeah. huge sand dunes or okay. in, even in goa in morjim they have in the northern area of morjim they have really like uh, 6 7 feet tall sand dunes and wow. the vegetation yeah and the vegetation over there is so we usually plant casuarina but casuarina is not right. our native plant anyway yeah yeah so in goa the the vegetation we have on those sand dunes is basically ipomia and cashew oh. and the ca- yeah and oh. the cashew oh. is not like the other trees it's only 4 feet tall but it spreads on the ground and okay. it is spread in like uh, some 50 feet or something like that and it was fruiting oh. so even though it was 4 feet oh. it was fruiting and we have some right. cactuses as well which grows in the naturally okay. grows so yeah so we don't exactly know what the vegetation natural vegetation is because Yeah. in most of our regions we have to, so basically uh, we planted casuarina in for the same purpose to prevent us from the yeah. all these act- right. like calamities but uh, right. actually i feel better than casuarina these native plants will do a better job so these green right. barrier should be protected and like rather than making a sea wall or putting those tetrapods on the shore to prevent erosion maybe we can try to maintain or create more sand dunes instead why not right right so my Hello? point of view about that's my point of view about all these actually sorry so so that's my point of view about these solutions rather right. than going okay. for hard okay. solutions we should go for soft ones Right, of course. So, with with these solutions, and maybe say you have been working in these areas which are getting affected by recent cyclones, and maybe we could say we can predict more cyclones in coming years. Currently, yeah, how do you see our coastal areas are at a stage of uh, say defending these uh, cyclones? What is the current stage of our coastal areas? Say, if two three cyclones come next year. Yes, mentally, as you said, uh, you are uh, creating awareness among people to deal with these situations. But naturally, what is the uh, situation right now? So naturally, uh, we have some structures which, okay. like, which are saving us right now. Because, but uh, we are losing structures as well. Right. Like, for example, a coastal road in Mumbai. so right. by building that so uh, the reason which uh, some minister i guess gave that it will prevent us from cyclone by acting as a sea wall yeah, yeah, yeah. i remember yeah but yeah so i don't know how much true it is because it has never <laughs> happened anywhere that a man made structure yeah. will prevent us from anything like this right and uh, so yeah so these structures will eventually affect some part of the area so for example when the ceiling bandra worli ceiling was built it did not affect the bandra worli area but in case of uran and nearby villages it started flooding so the high okay. tide line got inside the village okay which is yeah which is not uh, predictable something and by yeah. keeping all these things in mind we should maybe look at we should not uh, take ocean for granted because it's water right, like right. you get a, even a little right. bit space it will go inside like it doesn't right. care about right, right. yeah yeah so there is one interesting question from chinmay and the chat box she is saying cyclone is a natural disaster natural. are there any behavioral strategies known in marine fauna for protection from such natural disasters So we uh, somewhere have read that they sense these kind of things, and yeah. terrestrial fauna many times you see moving to safer locations. So does marine fauna have yeah. anything like that? 
so actually this is a good question and maybe it can be a study topic or research topic for someone right. before and right. after a cyclone maybe because yeah it's so, basically yeah it's basically inaccessible area where so during okay. cyclones exactly what happens we can't actually go or observe it by any kind right even if right. we mount right. a gopro on or any camera <laughs> it will get yeah. washed off because the for the sheer force right. of the waves is very difficult to handle by right. any sort of thing so i am very sure right. that these species will have some strategies for example i'll tell you about uh, the intertidal fish community they are very much okay. resilient and yeah they okay. have so they don't go much in the deeper ocean waters they only live between okay. the high tide and low tide mark right. so right. they have a mental map of their territory so they know oh, the okay. spaces which are safer safer and right. it has been observed that when the so it is not related to cyclone but it is something related to okay. general high tide low tide behavior okay so when the low the like blennies mainly they come out of water and try to secure the area out of water which is their favorite spot oh. Oh, or okay. which is their safest spot so there there is a paper on this actually which uh, okay. i don't know when it got published but yeah there is a paper on this and i have seen this behavior done by blennies they randomly come out of water and they'll just go and sit in that particular crevice which they want to be in during high tide maybe for uh, like uh, for protection from right. predators or the harsh wave action or something like that and right. so right. to prove that uh, like to uh, counter this thing i tried putting one of the fish back in the water in a tide pool okay in a minute it came back and it went to the wow. same spot yeah so yeah. it is not something wow. they are doing just by the sort of as a as a uh, random thing but it is out of instinct right. or maybe they are adapting to something right so we need more such observation yeah hello and hello 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 yeah i think somebody stuck out of yeah can you hear me hello i can hear you like you are audible yeah okay 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 great so uh, continuing this point uh, there was a question that just popped into my mind have there been any observations we we all know that uh, fishes usually breed uh, during the monsoon and we suggest all the uh, suggest a more than i should say the fisherman community doesn't fish uh, during the monsoon because fishes breed so have there been any observations that uh, these fishes sense to the cyclones and due to this uh, very high intensity of tides uh, they actually didn't breed or have there been any such observations that post cyclone uh, the maybe population has decreased or it, it isn't the way it should be so there is no such observation as such and this is actually okay. a good point to tell that not all the fishes that like not all the fish breeds in monsoon there are different right. breeding seasons some mm-hmm. fish breed twice a year some fish okay. yeah so it basically depend on their behavior the habitat right. the area and the population so some fishes right. are like more resilient i can say but there is no such case where we have observed that after cyclone like a certain population is decreased 
so so we know there are no uh, concrete uh, evidence is that uh, cyclones very usually affect uh, marine is it safe to say that uh, they don't really affect uh, the marine fauna on such a large scale is it is it safe to say that mm, right now with the currently available data without any observe so we don't have any data that's the point right yeah yeah so even if a dolphin or whale strands after doing it, their necropsy which they there are very few necropsies which has been done in our country compared to other countries right all right in the region of that actually we can't uh, say that this happened due to cyclone because maybe because it all right it can be a natural death and due, the body must be floating in the water and due to cyclone it just got stranded or something like that may happen right right so so uh recently one of uh, one of the in my native place somebody rescued a dolphin you do they live in a pod and like huge pods and they live offshore it was a uh, okay. spinner dolphin not wrong acha so a spinner dolphin and it got stranded but it was alive so oh, okay the, the that individual was the weak one which got stranded due to sight okay hello 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 yeah am i audible varun yeah yeah you are audible your voice is cracking a bit hello it's still cracking a bit hello hello no i think he's again having i we said there's a lot of uh, rain and lot of issues with internet today where is staying currently so the sudden again yeah sorry <laughs> and now that that's okay it's, yeah yeah it happens again and again yeah so, so, yeah. Uh, so i was yeah. saying about uh, the individual which got stranded so it happened right after the cyclone passed the northern maharashtra so maybe we can say okay. it happened due to the cyclone but right. we don't know the reason yet because the individual was still alive and fisherman released it back in the water and it went and it did not get stranded right. again so if the animal is right. not in condition to swim back then right. it eventually comes back again and again and eventually dies on the shore so nothing like right. that happened so maybe we can say uh, that yeah it was healthier individual and it went back thankfully but there is no such particular reason that Wow. yeah so there must be some strategies or something these animals using because if you look at fish they live under water but if you look at turtles or marine mammals they have to surface because they have to breathe air right right yeah so they must be having some strategies or they must be having some adverse effects as well because oh, yeah. it's exactly. not but the the thing is like how we can observe the terrestrial fauna we can't observe the these yeah, yeah 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 so maybe if the technology advances in coming future yeah, and right. we'll be yeah, able to observe the remote 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 remote. Yeah. yeah that would be so 
we Come don't know like. what happens underwater when the cyclone comes yeah right exactly so exactly, right. maybe these things but, actually uh, are interesting yeah yeah uh, but have there been any observations uh, we all know that uh, all of readily come to our coast to the eggs so uh, the migration is from right from australia to many other regions so has there been any uh, change of pattern uh, when there have been cyclones in some of their migration routes so no, i'm waiting for the weather arrival or something like that so there is no such pattern but Uh, i think couple of years ago we observed so in odisha we have this behavior called as aribada which is the okay. egg laying mass egg laying of olive red lilies acha okay aribada. right yeah right so it happens usually in the winter but a uh, couple of years ago it happened twice so acha. in winter and in april may or something so okay. when the first batch hatched and they the young ones were going in the sea the females were coming for the second round and oh, okay yeah it was a like once in a lifetime opportunity for many photographers because they clicked like the mother and the baby yeah. in the same frame right, right. yeah right, so right. we actually don't know why it is happening but so this thing happened actually now you have said it i have to actually go back and check whether any cyclonic activity happened after that or before that to right right yeah to like which will give us a reason but these cyclones many times right now on uh, our ratnagiri coast many uh, nests got destroyed because of the cyclone because right. the water got into like inside exactly and usually exactly. turtles lay their eggs above high tide line where water won't be able to reach so many right. nest got like even after like the forest department had a protect protected fencing around it protection around it but still you can't stop water again from going in and all those things so That's yeah the something. many nests got this thing yeah just right i guess and uh, to just uh, sum up uh, this session i guess it's going to be important in coming years uh, to Uh, be sensitized about this one and be prepared to uh, face whatever effects uh, it is going to cause. And as you said, maybe build some sand dunes or maybe uh, use the natural vegetation that is there as a barrier rather than casually yeah. have to face these yeah. cyclones. Because we all know that the activities we as humans are doing uh, in the environment are causing massive changes, and these cyclones are just going to increase uh, both in intensity yeah, yeah. and in yeah. frequency in coming years. so i guess uh, if not now if we are not maybe able to uh, put a number or maybe put exactly a, our finger on a particular effect on marine fauna they are maybe in some way getting affected and in coming years maybe that effect will be more uh, prominent and visual maybe we don't know but yeah. i guess when we know that uh, cyclones are going to be there and more frequent and more intense I guess it's time now to, uh, as you said, to do more studies and maybe to find some more technology to do this study. And yeah. uh, it's it's important to know what is happening with them. So yeah. thank you, thank you, Gaurav, thank for uh, joining in today and this difficult internet connectivity. Yeah, yeah. And Sorry. giving us insights into uh, life of marine fauna and how it affects, uh, or maybe we how we need to do more studies on them. to actually yeah. know the effects of cyclones but one thing is sure that it does affect in some of the other way so thank you everybody yeah. uh, for joining in today and uh, listening to our session uh, though there were some technical issues uh, we'll meet to next saturday with some uh, other interesting uh, issue uh, related to wildlife and till then have a great weekend uh, good night thank you once yeah, again thank you. bye bye